You're watching EASD TV. My name's Vivian Parry, and some of the things that I'm asked to do at EASD give me particular pleasure, and this is one of them, because I have with me four rising stars. Now, the rising star accolade is one that has been made to many people over the years, and actually, they've done extraordinarily well. So let me introduce you to a quartet of people that you should mark and know and keep an eye on because they will be the stars of the future. They will be giving those prize lectures in 10 or 15 years time. So let me introduce them. Starting with you, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm, I'm John Dennis. I'm a, a data scientist and epidemiologist at the University of Exeter in the UK. And my research looks at precision medicine in type 2 diabetes and so this means the idea of seeing whether it's possible to target treatment based on the characteristics of individual people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, the hope is that we can better tailor treatment and improve, mean that for individuals they, they can get the m maximum benefit and minimi minimise harm from treatment. Hi, so I'm Matt Johnson. I'm a molecular geneticist also working at the University of Exeter. Um, and my research focuses on monogenic autoimmune diabetes. So that's diabetes that's caused by a single mutation in the DNA, but is autoimmune similar to type 1 diabetes. Hi, I'm Diego Balboa. I am a researcher at the Center for Genomic Regulation in Barcelona, Spain, and I work with stem cells to create models to understand better diabetes. Basically, we are interested in knowing what gene defects could be leading to the development of diabetes disease. Hi, my name is Salva Magdasi, so I'm a clinical endocrinologist and I work in Karolinska University Hospital here in Stockholm. And I'm a researcher also in Karolinska Institute and I'm focusing on adipose tissue biology and how adipose tissue in obesity context could contribute and lead to type 2 diabetes and try to understand what are the mechanisms driving type 2 diabetes and how we could find new hits to better treat our patients in the future. So Salva, how much of a shock was it when you got the email saying that you had been given this Rising Star Award? Well, I first was attracted when I looked at the grants, you know, in our, our, our career, we look for the grants every day and check where we could apply to get money and to be more productive in research. And I was surprised by the title, the Rising Star. And then I said, why not? Let's try it. And, and, and somehow I wasn't waiting for any uh, uh, surprise like that because uh, then the, just the male fault like uh, suddenly and say you are a rising star. So the title is really beautiful and I was so happy and so surprised with this grant. Diego, how yeah. was it for you when yeah, you well, got that email? I, I, was, I was really thrilled. Uh, the feeling was awesome. Uh, I was not really expecting it at all. And furthermore, after these two, three years of pandemia, it was such a good news. I, I was really happy about it. And I'm extremely honored to receive the award. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly had to read the, the email several times before I could sort of believe it. But um, yeah, it was a, it was a, a big surprise, but obviously a, a, an honour as well to, to get the award. And I hope you showed it to your mum. I certainly <laughs> did, yeah. I, the, she was the second one I texted after my wife, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think the same as the others, um, it was a fantastic surprise and yeah, very unexpected. Uh, it's a great award to be able to tell your friends and family about, you know, everyone, uh, you, you say you've won a Rising Star Award and... Uh, <coughs> and your mum said, I always knew, I always knew <laughs> you'd turn out good. <laughs> Or well, actually, it's your gran who normally says that, isn't it? It's not your mum, it's your gran. <laughs> so uh, tell me, just to be serious a bit, what does this award mean, do you think, for your career? It's, it's, it's a really great platform to continue the next stage of, of my research. So uh, the, the funding that, that comes as part of this award uh, is going to be used to study longer-term cardiovascular disease outcomes in type 2 diabetes and for the first time bring a precision medicine approach um, to, to that area of work. And it, I will have a really great platform thanks to the EFSD support. 
So Diego, it is a great platform, isn't it, being given this award? Well, I think that uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us to continue developing our work and also a great recognition of the work that we've been doing the last years, uh, myself and all my colleagues and mentors. So I'm really happy and I would like to, to share, of course, this recognition with them as well. And uh, in terms of the funding, I think that uh, it's also a good L a, a, like a tool for us to, to further get into more uh, prospectively independent career, which I think that is uh, one of the goals of this award. It is a bit of a pressure and a weight on your shoulders getting an award like this, because you've now got to deliver on being, you know, become a superstar. <laughs> How does that pressure sit on your shoulders? Um, well, I, yeah, there is a pressure because a lot of the, the previous recip recipients of the awards have gone on to do great and, and amazing things and gone on to get further awards, further large um, pots of money as well. So there, there is some pressure, I guess, from that. But, but really, I'm just you know, enjoying doing the research and, and this, what this award will mean for that. So, yeah. And it's also a recognition of the area of your research as well as you personally. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's a big recognition from the scientific committee that leads ESD. I think it was an honor for us to be chosen as rising star. And it's also a challenge that means that we have to do better and better and really to be implicated in David's research and to, to decipher more uh, um, tools and more mechanisms that could help patients in the future and uh, try to co to uh, combat this, this this disease. I mean, so uh, clinical perspective, we I was implicated and I am implicated and I'm more challenged with the research that I have to do even better in order to uh, proceed in this career. So it's a challenge and an honor at the same time. So. In many senses, and I'm sure EASD would say this, that it's a real vote of confidence in you. And sometimes I'm, and I know from talking to many, many hundreds of young researchers, that actually sometimes you feel that imposter syndrome and think, you know, am I really doing a good job? And to have this vote of confidence, I suspect will mean a lot to you. But I wonder where you think that you will be in 10 years' time, or where you would like to be in 10 years' time, let's say that. Sure. Yeah, no, well, it's interesting you mentioned that, actually, because I was thinking about my first conference as a PhD student was ESD in Stockholm last time it, it came around Ooh, here. Oh, it's spooky. It's spooky. Yeah, and I was, I was reflecting on, you know, how far I'd come and how much things had changed. Um, but in terms of the future, I think in 10 years, I'd, I'd like to continue on this path. I'm really enjoying my research and really in, in, enjoying the aspects of becoming more of an independent researcher with, with my own team. And I'd like to very much continue on that trajectory um, and also build a, a strong collaborative net, network of other European researchers. Diego. I, I would love to to continue uh, pushing forward the developments that we are doing in using stem cells to, to understand better diabetes. And, and for that reason, I, I would really uh, love to, to develop in, a, in an independent researcher, having thing with colleagues where we can all together answer the very big questions that are still standing in the understanding of beta cell biology, allied biology, diabetes. So, Salva, uh, yeah. Salva what, you, what will you be doing in 10 years' time? I would push more and, more and more on both sides, clinical and research experience, and try to, to be an independent researcher and uh, continue both my clinical duties and my research duties. And I enjoy also academic life and uh, uh, teaching. So I would be more and more implicated in this field. And I hope that it would be always in Karolinska Institute. Matt? Yeah, I mean, probably a similar story. I, I hope to keep going, uh, keep finding new exciting science and keep working with great people uh, and hopefully be you know, leading my own group by that point. Wonderful. So congratulations again to all of you. you. It really it honestly gives me such pleasure to see talent rewarded and recognised like this. So I hope you go out and have a great celebration and actually sit down and be proud of yourselves because certainly your mums are very proud of you and so are all of we. So thank you very much to all of you and I hope you've spotted them. I hope you've put down their names in your notebooks because these are the rising stars of the future. Bye for now. <laughs>